Hi, it's Dave, and I just wanted to introduce an amazing interview with some really interesting characters, including Gollum, King Kong, and Caesar. This year's IBC coverage is brought to you by Newtech, Blackmagic Design, Signiand, and G Technology. Andy, thanks ever so much for joining us. And, uh, you know, with apologies, I want to talk about the technical side of what you do, but also, you know, how, how the interface between acting and technology works now and will be developing. So, um, you know, you, I guess you've done more than anyone to, to forward the, you know, the capabilities of motion capture and bring it into the mass audience. And uh, I just initially just wondered if you could talk about, you know, what the technology was like when you started doing this and what it is now. Sure. You know, what, what, what is that difference? Sure. I mean, I, I think I was, I was very fortunate to sort of arrive at a time when uh, there, was a, there was a sort of a sea change in terms of the attitude towards visual effects. Um, up, I mean, up until, up until the, the point of kind of around the beginning of Lord of the Rings, uh, the visual effect was, was very divorced from, from the actor. So, I, in the, in the first... Uh, or in the new, rather, at that time, Star Wars trilogy. You know, there were actors who were on green screens, again, acting against nothing, weren't able to really, truly communicate or connect with anything. And I think one of the one of the things that Peter Jackson really wanted to do with Lord of the Rings was to have the actor playing a CG character, in, in this case, Gollum, uh, in a, in very intimate scenes with with Frodo and Samwise Gamgee. You know, be there, present, actually embodying the role, taking on the role in a very conventional way, although fi finally the character would be manifested as a CG character because of the way that he looks. I could, you know, that you can never possibly cast someone so emaciated and so, you know, designed in such a way. Uh, you, you, even with incredible makeup, I don't think you could have ever have got there. So, so it, th that was the sort of, it, that's what I kind of stepped into, that, that I was going to be on set acting the role, knowing that finally I would be manifested as, uh, as this creature. Um, but with that came this huge potential to absolutely kind of reach for a character that, that is, that, that is in a sense, um, you know, it's a fantasy character, but of course you have to ground it in, in tr you know, true emotions and, and a real human, human nature, and a, a, a human nature that people would be able to understand and connect with. Well, well I, I was getting, you know, I know I know asked you to, to you know, compare the then with now, but it just occurs to me while you talk, start talking about emotions, because essentially what you're trying to do, I guess, is to make a machine express emotions. Ultimately. Exactly. Well, it's it's like it's very close to. I mean, what I discovered when I first started working on on set was that the, the, the shooting on set with the other actors was very, very much like any other form of live action acting. You don't think about what you look like. You're not wearing a costume and makeup, but that's irrelevant. You're looking into the eyes of your fellow actor and eliciting reactions from them. And drama is what happens between actors. Not you know you don't you know drama isn't something you present by yourself. It's what happens between people. So. So it's so, you know that that was the that was the first part of the process and living through the scenes with the actors on set and then and then the, the, the big change was then going to a motion capture studio at the time it was motion capture not performance capture so by that I mean using physical capture so so at that time video games were capturing athletes and you know. Um, tennis players and, and martial artists for video games that was already being achieved but when I first saw a CG 3D 3 uh, you know a kind of 3D model a grey shaded model of Gollum and I was able to lift my hand up and you know Gollum would raise his hand or if I incline my head I could see you know the, the Gollum doing that 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 for me was a real epiphany so, so that feedback Put, pushed you even further into the character. Exactly. And then you can start to also calibrate your physicality to, to push even further the, the, the marionette, if you like, the digital marionette. So, so by that I mean, you know, if I stand upright and I start to crook my neck, yes. that, that we, you can dial in a certain, a certain angle that Gollum's head could be sort of slightly more, uh, you know, bent over or, or the back can be hyper, hyper extended so that you're learning uh, how to manipulate a, a calibrated puppet, if you like. So what that suggests to me is that, you know, we were talking about, you know, differences between then and now. Now you have much better, almost real-time visualisation because you have virtual cameras 
and, and you, you know you just have a much better idea of the context that you're acting in and, and presumably that improves that feedback loop and allows you to give an even more nuanced absolutely powerful. yeah I mean also as a director you know can that, you know uh, as a director and actor, being able to see your character in, a, in a, an environment, say using Unreal uh, or, or Unity, to actually you know change the lighting, move the you know s create sets on the fly, you're able to, to in the virtual production pipeline. It's and also with with because again going back to that time, it was just motion capture, and then the whole facial capture side of things evolved when I, on the next film that I worked on with Peter Jackson, which is King Kong, where we we did some really. Amazing close-ups. Yes. Yeah, exactly, and that again was 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 an attempt to to have a you know in the first in, in Lord of the Rings animators were were basically copying my facial expressions that were performed and filmed on thirty five millimeter film. With King Kong, it was literally a direct drive, retar yeah. retargeting a one to one correspondence between every facial muscle exactly. and the exactly. I mean, obviously there was additional animation in there, of course, because because you you know with all with. With all the best will in the world, it doesn't. You know, the, the, the physiognomies are slightly different. However, the the performance is kept in, intact, and the fidelity to the performance was. And, and I was just discussing with, with someone else that you know, it's not like wearing prosthetic makeup because you're not having to fight through an artifact. You, you're just you're able to really play very internally, and that and that for me was the the, the big epiphany is that that you you know everyone thinks performance capture is about wildly over pantomiming everything and and actually it allows you to be incredibly subtle and play close ups um, much like you would as if you you were just in a normal live action scene. Yeah, yeah. So so. Um that's interesting. So, so it suggests that you, you know, when you started, you might have to exaggerate your performance, and now you, you almost have to measure it. Yeah, yes. absolutely. And if you look at the kind of uh, the Apes trilogy, uh, the new Apes trilogy, I mean, a lot of the way that that was directed um, uh, was to, to really see the emotions of these characters, and a lot of it is carried in close up. So, you, so again, kind of going against the sort of perception of performance capture as being this sort of doing lots of movement. This is this is this is really examining the interior of the character with with very subtle uh, expression and sometimes hardly any expression. I mean, some of the best performances you see in live action movies are obviously you know there's, there's you're not overshowing, you're not demonstrating what the character's thinking and feeling. You're 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 observing behaviour and you're observing real emotion and that and that really is able to be read now. Yeah, yeah. Now, in in terms of, I guess the next big step is going to be. Um, you know, re-synthesizing other human characters. You know, and do, do, do you think, in a sense, it's it's easier to make you know, big hairy apes believable, as opposed to let's say, you know, the idea was that you would play some other well-known face. You know, because we we come across this thing called the uncanny valley, don't we? Do you, I mean, do you think we're close to crossing that, or maybe uh, we have? I, I, I do. I don't think we have. I do think that, that uh, you know, the, the human face is, is quite unforgiving because we watch human faces all day, every day. And we're, we're, our eyes are attuned to reading truth and or, or falsity. And uh, we, could, we, could, we are very sophisticated in being able to do that. So it's much more forgiving if you have got a, a you know, a character that has got bigger features or are slightly abstracted from the human physiognomy. But I do think, I don't think it'll be fun from it I think you know there are new films coming like Gemini Man I think the younger version of Will um, Will Smith yes um, and and then of course the Irishman which is the film that uh, Robert De Niro is playing a young, you know plays a younger version of himself and Joe Pesky and and uh, um, and uh, Al Pacino you know th I think there is definitely there's been huge strides towards towards that uh, that reality uh, being being read and, and believed, but um, I, I do I do think um, what is interesting is if you have a face that has lots of features, for instance, an older face which has got lines and cracks and you know this character in there, yeah. that's much much easier than than a young fresh face. Yeah, I think you almost become a caricature of yourself as you get older, don't you? That's to put it rather exactly. cruelly. But. Exactly, exactly. I mean, it's like it is like the the, uh, the app that turns you into the eighty year <laughs> octogenarian version of yourself. You know, you kind of to be able to do that, you, you know, using using a, uh, which is exactly what we're talking about, you know, you, that, 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 that there's more forgiveness in that. Yeah. And do you think, I mean, that app works using AI. Yeah. Do you think AI has a big 
part to play in, in, in I do in machine learning machine learning definitely and not just not just in terms of creating perfect digital humans or perfect rep representations of you know of a human being but but also in terms of for instance I'm working on Animal Farm George Orwell's book Animal Farm and and in terms of performance capture and physical capture, you know, how do you make the, the body movements of a bipedal human work and, and, and draw cues from a, a quadruped animal? Well, you can use machine learning to make, maybe drive the back legs. So that, so that you can have a horse with seven legs if you want it. Right, exactly, exactly. Or if you're playing a dragon, then you can you can use your arms, but then you, you've got forty foot wings back. You know, so so it's it's it, I think machine learning for for, for sure can, can is going to be able to play a huge part. In and that. when you combine that with the capabilities of the games engines like Unity and Unreal, uh, where, where, yeah, where do you think that's going to take us? Well, I do, I do think that, that eventually, and I don't think it's that far off, maybe it's two to three years, you know, if you talk to Unity or Unreal, they might say it sooner, but, uh, but that, that you will have real-time, you know, real-time playback, you know, so that you will be able to, because one, one of the most difficult things as a director is, is, you know, you want in your edit as soon as possible for the studio to see or for, you know, the, the powers that be, you want to see a real performance that you've watched on stage and seen by the actor but retargeted to the avatar character and you want to be able to have that in your cut as soon as possible and I think that that is one of the big that is definitely one of the big challenges that, 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 that I don't think is quite there yet and also you you know we are not far off being able to fully render in game so that you will be you know you will be able to use shots they will final you can final shots um, you know, and that has implications for the whole of cinema, doesn't it? It really does. It really does. And especially now, there are so you know with the streamers and and the amount of you know big cinematic quality, you know feature mm. quality uh, drama that's happening on on uh, on TV. You know, you, I think, and you know, given that given that budgets are inevitably less than the big tentpole movies, you you want that. That that is you know you want to have, be able to have that scale and you know create an army of thousands and make them look believable and. Um, you know, and, and have that, and have that there at a fraction of the cost. Superb. We covered a lot of ground there. Absolutely fascinating. Thanks. Thanks. Thank Andy. you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.